operations. Thank you so much. All right, layout of the distribution theorem, let's go. So this is the listing of all possibilities with their corresponding probabilities for each possibility. By now, there's two different options. Success or failure, usually the one we would like to think through. So, oh, the knee surgery, back to knee surgery, right? So three different uh, knee surgery attempts. Anybody remember this guy? This is probability of success, true, right? 75% uh, success rate, that means we have a 25% failure rate. And so yeah, that's just an example. Problem itself is right here. So let's go over here. So uh, this one, probability distribution theorem, sometimes it actually does test whether certain numbers are correct. So there's a survey here. US adults are asked to identify the social media platform they use. The results are shown. Six adults who participate in the survey are randomly selected asked whether they use social media platform on Facebook, right? Particularly Facebook, right? So this is the one that we were having uh, an issue on last time, right? Oh, cool, okay. So 68%, that would be the success rate if I ask anybody in the US, correct? That means we have a 32% failure rate, if I were to ask. And then I get big numbers here. Oh, which number is flying at you, okay? So we want to test all the different possibilities. And we're getting math formulas in our heads, we're good? So first one is, what's the probability that after asking six adults, zero of them are going to say they use Facebook? So this is a combination, right? All the different ways I can pick zero people out of six success of asking a person and we're going to have six failures in this process so notice there's only one way this combination can happen right it's called fail 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 right there's no other fail fail in this whole process so only one combination this can be there's going to be zero chances of success all are failures, and if you take 0 0.32 to the sixth power, you're going to get a very tiny, tiny, tiny one. Good, cool. And then we just go through it. So, what's the probability of having just one success or one person saying their Facebook? Well, it could be either you ask the first person and they say yes, or the second person, or the third person, or fourth, or fifth, or sixth. So that means there's six different possibilities of this happening. One of the six choices. It could be the first, only the sixth. And then you have one success out of it, 68% chance to get that guy, five times you're going to lose. So there's your probability. Uh, board, yeah. Someone? Other people don't want to answer because they don't want to answer. Okay. Let's go with it. How about uh, two people saying, well, there's 50 different possibilities. I can have two successes in a row of six things, right? As we move things around. So we've got 15 different possibilities, two successes, four unsuccesses, and we're left with about 7%. It should be around 7%. Then we do the third. Okay, you guys talk to me. Does the math make sense? Tristan, I'm going to ask you personally. Are we yeah. good? Okay, so this is just a formula, a formula that gives that. So for three successes to happen in a, to pick three S's in a row of six, there's going to be 20 different possibilities that can happen. If you wanted, we actually would like chart it out. So notice the numbers go down now, right? So now, because the number of successes now are higher, failures are lower. So there's 15 different possibilities. I can combine S and F together. If I have four S's. There's only six different possibilities I can combine to get all S's and one F, one failure in this process, right? I can either the failure was the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, fifth one, sixth one. So there it is. And then all six of them say, yes, we use Facebook. So there it is. So to verify results, about 32% of, of the people probably should say, yes, I use Facebook, and about 28 about 30% should say, so four or five. Notice if you add 32 plus 27, that's what 60% is in running. So you figure if the stats are true, 
we should ask six people and um, 60% of those people should probably say, yes, I use Facebook. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna ask six people, you guys ready? Real quick here, just to sort of see where we land, Let's see if the stats are actually true. Tristan, yeah. talk to me. Do you use Facebook as your social media platform? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's a yes. Andy? Yeah. Hugo? And then? No, okay, four, five out of four. That's so cool. So we landed like right over here. Are we good? So that kind of makes sense. We ask another six pair of six, another pair of six, another pair of six, and we should have those kind of results. So you're like, hey, that does make sense. I might think the numbers are probably high. Just be first. Slightly older stats now. Okay, so let's take a look at these probabilities here. So if you list them down, hey, that's a frequency distribution, isn't it? That's all the way from like chapter two, chapter 2.1 right there. I got my frequency, I got my x values, I have my probability of each one. That's called a relative, I think it was called a relative frequency distribution, right? This is when they added it to the point. That is so cool, everything's circling back. That's crazy. Okay, so let's use a little bit of technology here in the next one. Here it is. A survey found that 26% of these adults believe that there is no difference between secured and unsecured wireless networks. I don't know, it's gonna ask here. Uh, let's see, you randomly select 100 adults. Ooh, this number is gonna be huge. Could you imagine the number of possibilities here? What's the probability that exactly 35 adults believe there's no difference between secured and unsecured networks? So we're gonna use technology here, this University of Phoenix. So jamming, okay, so let's see. Um, we're gonna select out of 100, that's our value there. What's the probability that 35% of them would, or 35 of them would do so? And 26 is our success or is it our failure? That's gonna be our success, is that true? Success. So let's go with it. Let's see if we can write this up from the previous one. Ready? I'm going to grab a pen here. The previous one here. Let me put this all together. Let's see what we get here. Again, we go with uh, 100. What is that? So on your calculator here, we're not going to do it by hand. C35. There's all the different possibilities I can get. 35 success and failure within 100. Then I got my, uh, let's see what I have. So 26 is success, so 0 0.26. And I'm going to have 35 of those guys. Uh, failure rate. What's my failure rate now? <laughs> 74. Perfect. Okay. And then uh, if out of 100, if I have 35 successes, how many failures should I have? Oh well, yeah, sure. If uh, 35 is the number of successes, right? Then how many failures if I'm going to add it? Ask 100 people. Then? 65. Everybody okay with 65? I just want to make sure this is the important stuff. You guys know exactly where each of those numbers came from, right? And if you want to write it in. This is like uh, failures, success from from the hundred over here, right? Kind of just put in whatever notes you need kind of to organize the information. I think you guys are cool with that. Uh, you guys put in the number and tell me what you guys get. I'm going to use my number two here. Okay, so I'm going to use my. Um, 
Let's see what I got. Let's together. So I got 100, and those were the capital, the weeks of it, the library, and got the TIA 3 calculator. Mm -hmm. Here it is, math menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go to the probability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Left to right, it doesn't matter. And we're going to go to NCR, right? Because it doesn't matter which, when they can enter the process, right? Click in on enter. We got ourselves 35. You know what I would rather do? I would go like this. I would probably just more. I would rather just get the number. That is a crazy small, it's a good number. Oh, so big, I'm sorry. Big, big number, right? All the different ways you can take 35 people from successes inside of rolling. That's like the it says 1.09, right? That means it's 27 decimal places this way. So I think that's it's a 27. I don't know why I know this guys, but this is uh septillion. Or not septillion. So there's a uh, real quick here. Let's go with it, guys. There's thousands, right? Millions, billions, anybody? Trillions. Okay, next. <laughs> Quadrillions, quintillions, and then there's septillions, and then there's septillions. There's there's Mars. So that's two seven commas. <laughs> Okay, with that, let's multiply it times in parentheses 0 0.26 to the power of this little carrot right here. Call it carrot. Why do we call it carrot? I have no idea. 35 times. Oh, sorry, sorry. Look over here. Sorry, guys. Go backwards here. I got to put a comma here. Now I got to put a little carrot. The next one is 0 0.7. We're working with it. To the power of 65. <laughs> 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 Um, did anybody type it in as like one just big giant equation? Did you guys get an error? Did you guys get the same? Yep. Same, same. Okay. Um, that's what I was trying to see. If we need for instance, sometimes like you might need parentheses around this guy. So this is only that. What I do? That first, click enter. Again, uh, important for me. I did, you guys got the same answer. So, Andy, did you guys, did you guys get that answer? Super duper important. Make sure you guys get the same answer I did. Okay. You guys do it correct. That's the whole point here. Who's that? Right. So, three decimal place accuracy, that's cool. 
we are going to know that we want like three or maybe four decimal place accuracy. Usually, with this stuff. Okay, so real we'll quick here. That represents, you guys talk about what percent does that represent? Do, do, do. Percent from decimal, right? You just move the decimal place twice. It's like 1.2%. Everybody did there? Or no? Yeah. Yeah. So converting this to a percent, what we do is we just move the decimal place over. So everybody agreed this to be technically the equivalent of 1.2% now. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to think about this here. If it's less than 5%, this is this right here, we're going to consider that a very unusual event or just unusual event. Okay. If it was less than 1%, if it was less than that, we consider it extremely unusual event. That's kind of like our numbers. We're going to go into it as we get into the virtual stats and all of this stuff here. But that's how the probability works. Anything less than 5%, it's kind of like on like on the like way out of the side. So good. If, you're, if everything was bunched up in the middle and you're in the 5% category, that means you're either 5% here or here, right? You're kind of like off to the side too much. Yeah. Is this this Yes, uh, or close to it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, you guys, all yours, and go. And let's not do all of them. That's a lot. I guess now we should do all of them. Okay, go This one says exactly two, right? At least two and then fewer than two. So we're going to have to sort of think about how we calculate stuff. Okay. Uh, you guys comfortable doing yourself? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I. So let's see. A survey found that 70% of people still say that Google News is a major news source for them. 70%. Uh, you randomly select four adults. That's cool. Ask them whether Google News is a majority source for them. Find the probability that exactly two of them is responding yes. Is there? Uh, let's see, four people. Exactly two of them are oh. So I'm going to use a little bit of time. Um, think about it. We're going to plug in. Right? It's just very similar to the previous problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So if you want to, you can actually even uh, rearrange your data points. Well, I think we'll be able to. So what's your n value? Under that, what's your n value? N is the number of people you survey. Four. What's your uh, p value? The p value is the percent for success or decimal for success. I think you're like 0 0.17, right? It's this guy here, right? This is your success right here. What's your failure rate? Eighty-three, right? Eighty-three would be your failure rate. 0.83. Okay. And then the X value. X value is how many you need. So exactly two. So you the answer is gonna hold up just a little bit. Uh, the answer is you get 0 0.119 if you wait. So try to do 0 0.119. Okay, we're gonna need some help. All the good stuff here. Uh, otherwise, we're good. <laughs> okay, so this one. So in this case, uh, it's the whole history of the whole thing, right? Because we're going to have to do it all. And then the x value is uh, the same way. You want two and two times. Okay. Now, let's buy time. So, um, go ahead. Yeah, you can multiply it or. Yep. Okay. So this one you're going to put uh, 0.17. And 
and then again, we want to just two people to say yes, right? And then all the ways you can get an unsuccess. So if someone says that means it's 0.83 or one. Right? Well, that's not really the problem. Yes, exactly. I'll come back to this. So it's 0.1 or 0.83. So probably be. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Let's see. Let's walk around. Make sure she's all we good. Good. Talk over Okay, I'll show you a little trick for that one, but you can go for it. Okay. Successes do we want? Oh, this is, yeah, so, this is your successor, right? Thank you. 
All right, and if you guys are good, hey, I figured out number one. It's good when you do two and three. All yours to do two and three. You may want to think about what you do, and I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. You may have to add stuff together. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. You got a mic. Yes. Okay. So good. I think as a class, we're good here, right? So now the question is how at least two of them responded yes. Oh, 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 okay. Just one. Thank you. Okay, we'll be good there. Okay, guys, we'll go work. Uh, everybody got one. Everybody got there. Sweet. Okay, you should get a 0 0.119. Three decimal places about good because that means if I move this into a percent, I know 11.9%. Okay, number two. Uh, the hint is you're going to have to add things together. Okay, good. So go back over here. Number two says at least two of them responded yes. So that means what? I mean, probably at least two. So two could have done it, three could have done it, four could have done it, right? That's the possibility. So for number two, whoa, I was a little sharp in the board. So this one tells you that's for two people, right? That at least two means I got a capital of two, I got a capital of three, and then four. Just like we need to add this together. Okay. That makes sense. At least two means two is going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to say yes, four is yes. Right? We have to have those Yeah. Right, so now, there's a two here. You guys do the same thing. You guys do the same thing. What's that point? Except now it has two point two. That's And now two point two. That is all right, I'm going to walk around. You guys talk among yourselves, talk to your neighbor, see which way you go. I have this. I'll just say yes or no. If you got it right. Hey, Brian. Hey, that guy. Oh, it was meant for you to see it. So, Marker says at least two means I have two people. I could have three people. I could have four people. And this is the beginning of it. I didn't fill up the rest yet. Once we get all these three numbers, we're going to have to add them together. So the three and four. Yeah, we already have the two. So you have the three and four and add them up. And that will be two. Two four. This time they have three.
I should have listed A, B, A, B, and C instead of that. So sorry, sorry. That's the answer for number one. Okay, now we're done. Now, as we're doing number two, that's what I was going to say. This is two people saying yes. Good. But what we want is we want two people saying yes. We also want three people saying yes and four people saying yes. We want to add up the whole entire property. Number four. Number four. So this one we just cut with a two people, right? Mm -hmm. It equals about 12%. Mm -hmm. no, this is At least two people respond okay. yes, right? So this guy right here, this guy's gonna come down as part of the answer for this. So it's, so it's gonna be this capital of two people say yes. Or we we'll also need to know when three people say yes and when four people say yes. Mm -hmm. So you go four C two, four C three, four C three. I got this. Uh, yeah, these don't because that's success code. Yeah, just the next. Oh, this guy's going for it, right? Okay, class, let's go for it. Yeah, two, two, three, 
try this one right here. See if it made a difference. Forget the power of zero. And what did you guys get? Uh, yeah, 8.35. Okay. okay, so your calculator, depending on which, which way it's going, it either had like a little E next to it and it had negative four, or it had a 10 with a negative four on top. Is it supposed to be a three still on the uh, four four, or is it supposed to be a four above the four? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Thank you so much. Now I messed everything up. Sorry. No, it's totally my fault. There it is. It should be four and zero. Thank you so much for catching me. If I make mistakes, please catch me up. All right, okay, okay, we're good. Yes. 
Uh, 8.35-ish, is that right? Times 10 to the negative 4. So what this means is this guy's going back 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll drop there. This is 0, 0, 0, 0. So the answer is 0 0.0085. Whoa, that's a small number. Okay, question is this. Okay. Statistics, the probability sometimes, especially at the end. We can round off the numbers at the end, okay? But if we're actually doing the problem itself, we don't want to do rounding. Does that make sense? It like throws things off as we round through the process. So we'll it. You guys ready for this? Mark it set. Here's what we're going to put in. We're going to put in 4, E2, 0.17 to the second, 0.83 to the second, plus some. One humongous problem plus 4C3.17 to the third, 0.83 to the one if you like, plus 4C4.17 to the four. And then if you want to put down that one, if you don't, that's fine too, whichever, right? Uh, point a three, since we're just learning this process, I'll just put out the zero just for the sake. So, okay, can you guys give me that number? So, all at once on the calculator, all at one big, humongous thing that you can. Oh, wait, I guess you can't do it. Oh. Uh, we can add this up. I just want to see the difference here. So, let me, uh, let me do this here. Adding this up right here. You guys do it that way with the addition stuff, and I'm going to do it with uh, this way. The zero plus zero zero one six plus zero. Okay, this is me adding up this one right here. So point two eight seven three five. I got, uh, so doing the this, the uh, the long page one. I got point uh point one three six six, and then adding them all together, I also got point one three six. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so that's the four versus four. Uh, that's one of the places. So I got, I added that to another thing. Sorry, this one right here, right? This one. This one was that one. This is me uh, doing them individually. Four, two, four, three, four, four, then adding them up. There's this guy here, the eight, three, five, right? I had to adjust for the decimal place. Can you adjust it for that. Oh, but this is me right here. I forgot the zero here. Sorry. Thank you so much. This will be so much better. Okay, Brian, is this what you got? One, one, four, two, three, five. Closer. What did you get? Well, adding them together, I got 0.135835. 135? I'm not adding them how you have it up there on the board. And then adding them all together. Four decimal places gave me uh, 0.136. One, three, get three out of it. Instead of yeah. I mean, I can try it again. Yeah. If you can try it, I think I got my numbers all correct now. 0 0.016, 0 0.00835. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what this one here is. Okay, this one right here. 
Anybody else got a 14335? <laughs> Okay, guys. Um, no problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let's see a few little things here. So uh, I think I'm going to focus on this one right in the middle one. Let me go to um, four math probability four three right. Then it's uh, point one seven to the third power times three to the one power right. Okay, so that's three one. Sorry, guys, I'm getting somewhere. It's going somewhere. I'm not with Okay, let me go back to. Uh, let me erase this one. I'm going to go four. Four dash two. That's the one I think that wants. And the answer is multiply by seven. Two minus three. Two. Um, when doing yeah. the uh, four NCR two or four NCR to the other number, do we have to put that into the calculator? Can we just use the number you already gave us in the beginning? Let's so say uh, four C three, and then it gave me a four. Do I have? Can I just use the four and then continue the formula? You can do four and four, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just add four I'm just trying to see what's going to be the calculation. So if I that is weird, okay. Okay, I'm done. I'm not sure why it's that much off. So, all right, so let's go with it here. So, if you guys did, did you guys do this on your calculator? 
that I messed up. All right, class, let's begin here. So what was the problem? I had uh, three zeros behind the decimal place here. Oh, uh, And only two zeros here. So I messed up. It was just one decimal place off. So once I fixed that, so I got myself, that's what you get, 0 0.1366. Is that good? Everybody okay there with that? All right, and going the other way. And you guys talk to me here. Um, which which way you guys prefer that one? Doing them individually or just plugging the whole thing in the calculator? Whole thing. Whole thing. Individually, okay, Hugo. Individual, Tristan. I have to do it. Got it. You have to do it individually. Yeah. Any more TI eighty three calculators in the in the library? Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Cool. No problem. You for them. So, uh -huh. Three zeros in between the decimal point and the first non zero number. There should be three at that point. Because when you move it, notice you move it from right here, which is a non zero number here. When you move it four times, you're going to wind up here, which allows you three extra spaces of zeros. Jacqueline, are we good? Okay. All right, class, let's go with it here. So finally got that one done. That was uh, interesting. So individually, you can do it. If you do that, leave extra space, obviously, right? You're gonna have to go out uh, just a little bit more on the number so you, so you don't get mixed up. So let's see, if we were gonna go for three decimal place accuracy, my preference is that you go out probably five decimal places, kind of like that, that much if you want, right? Because that will give you, make sure those numbers at the end, the fifth decimal place is not affecting your answer at the three decimal place accuracy, we're good? It probably shouldn't by then, unless it's like nines everywhere. Then it's like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so are we good with number two? Whew, that was, snap, that was only number two. We got to go over here. Number three, fewer than two of them respond yes. Oh, man. 
we got to do this all over again. Yeah, so we got to think about what fewer than two. So actually, there's only two to go. So zero, right? And then one. That, that we've got zero and one. That's the only thing we've got. So let's do this quickly now that I know where I messed up on. So going over here, I'm going to go number three is uh, 4C0, 1.7 to the 0, 0.83 to the 4. There's all my failures. And then one success only. That's what I got here. Can you guys give me five place decimal accuracy here? So for this one, or even more. Okay, I'll do it. Just to know what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I also want to show you something too. On the calculator, when you guys do one of them, so this is uh, super neat stuff here. So four. Math menu, probability, and see zero. We good? We're doing the zero marker. So everybody said no at this point, right? Multiplied by. This guy's becoming a zero there. And that becomes four failures. 0.474583. Okay, everybody agreed with me? Okay, real quick, this one I want to show you in the calculator. So if you guys have your calculator ready, are you serious? I want to go back. Thank you. Calculators at the ready. Here we go. Notice this guy here is a problem that we inputted, right? And this is a result that we got out. We good? So down here in your calculator, you have something called in yellow, you have entry. Let me set entry there. So what you do is you click on second function. Super cool. You guys are gonna be very happy. You guys ready? Second function or second function. Yeah. And then click enter. And you got whatever you entered last time, it just copies and pastes to the next one. How does that help us? Now what you can do is you use your cursor like this move around and you can just move it around. So now we're gonna change it to one here, move over to the 1.7, we're gonna change it to one here, and then we're gonna change this guy to three. Super duper. Okay, how many are happy? Yes. Enter dot three, eight, 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 one, five. and add those together and we should be just fine. Uh, 0.474583 plus 0.388815516. It doesn't matter if you go more decimal places. All right, uh, we're just cutting off at three. So 0.863. Okay, we're good there. I'm gonna draw a little line, which means uh, something different. And here's a something different. You guys ready for this? Hold on, let's talk about this. If we went over here, see this guy over here? Logic puzzle, you guys ready? So for number two, remember for number two, we said at least two of them responded yes, true? So that means two responded, three responded, four responded, right? Isn't this right here fewer than two? Isn't that the complement of this one? I'll let that sink in, ready? For number two, at least two, because two responded yes, three responded yes, or four responded yes, right? But if fewer than two of them responded yes, that means it's the ones that we did not count yet, right? Remember, we counted two, three, from what? From one, you guys ready for this? We got an answer of? Look at this little answer right here, 0 0.137. We go over here and all we do is we go like this and I wanna see what happens. What do we get? A 
Hey, we got the answer, right? That's cool. So you got to think about logically, don't just kind of number crunch. Don't be mindless with it, right? Think to yourself, like, I got these answers. How about if I just kind of do this over here or do something else over here? Let's see if I can put those answers in. Okay, are we good? Cool. Okay, that is binomial probabilities. Okay, next. Let the fun begin. Um, should we? I guess we should mention this by now. Let's go with. Yeah, let's go back to number one again. Find the probability. Exactly two of them responded yes. That's this one here, right? No, number, number one was this answer right here, right? right? Let me just check something just real quick here. Just trying to give you guys all the tricks here. No. Random binary, random, random numbers. We'll get to all those eventually. Let's see if we have, okay. So never mind for now. We'll skip that one for now. Okay. That's what mine does. Yes, I'm thinking if it's a 84, 83 here. Oh, it's a 84. Okay, I have 83. So I cannot show you. If you have a 84, you might find something interesting in the textbook. How about that? I'll just leave it there. Uh huh. Okay, so let's GM with the next stuff here. So let me go through this. We did this. We did that. We did that. We did that. We did that. And so now we're going to do this by something called a table. What, Mr. Andrew? Yep, we're going to do it by table. So we have about 10% of workers ages 16 and older in the United States commute to their jobs by carpooling. That's cool. You randomly select eight workers out of the 10. And the question is, what's the probability that exactly four of them carpool to work? And this is an American community survey. So I'm sure it seems like it's real. Okay, so you guys have your textbooks. Let's go jam with your textbooks and you're gonna open up all the way, go all the way to the back of your textbooks. And let's see if I... But it starts off at table four already, right? It's so cool. You guys see the three all the problems you covered. So go back to chapter two if you want. You can solve chapter two. Have a little formulas here. If you want to get to the formula, that would be good to go Okay, all the formulas for chapters all the way to the end. That's so cool. So if you ever need to find a formula, there it is. Okay. Okay, that's the back cover. That's cool. Back cover is there. 
All right, now we're good. We're going to do this. So, this was fun. Was this fun? Okay, so all formulas that you ever need up are just sitting right here for you. And these tables, they'll start. So, throw a table five, table four, right? Standard deviation. We'll get to this. This is uh, factor six. So if you want to do this, you go back a little bit in your textbook. There's this your selected answers. Keep on going back to the selected answers. Da -da -da. And then you go to wind up with the try it answers, normal probability plots, which is appendix C. And then you get to appendix B. That's crazy. So A7, if you want to look, A, look for A7, you to to start. All right, so these guys are the hey, remember those random number generators that we did? Like, how do you randomize a 731? I'm not sure. Uh, different students, and you did it by this one. Okay, so jump to hey, what's that binomial distribution? The second one is the one that has a full big on signal. Okay. Got me with me here on 4.7, 4.8 now, 4.8, 4.9. Let's do that one there. So here's what we're going to do. Can we do this by table? It has all the probabilities on there already. That's what we have. Notice on the, uh, on when it says A8 right over here, right on the column, it actually gives you your N value, gives you your X value. And then across the top, it gives you your percent. So 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.10. Are we good there? See if we can read that table. Are we good for reading the table? So what we want, we want to find on your table, we find a binomial distribution that says this. Your n value is 8. Your p value is 10%. And your x value is four. We good? So I'll let you guys point to it. How about that? And we'll just kind of I'll come by real quick here. So I'm looking for n value of eight. That's probably the first one to find, right? Then you find the x value of four. Once you find that, then you look for a 10% p value. Okay, Jacqueline, good. Found it already. That's cool. Giselle, we good? Can't believe we found it. Okay, sounds good. I'm gonna go like this. It should be like this, right? Can't put the full page on, but you're looking for eight for the n values, four for the x value, and then the column is gonna be your 10% column, and you should get a hey, exactly 0 0.005. Are we good? So this is by the text in your textbook. Now, the only problem is if you do this on the calculator and we actually compute this, it actually turns out to be 0 0.0045927. Are we good there? So these guys are rounded off answers already. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know, you guys talk to me. Before calculators came on the scene, that's how we did it. When I did statistics, <laughs> Yep, dinosaurs next to me. I had pet dino, and uh, we did statistics like that. Or it was the fact that my statistics teacher said, "Calculators, that's dumb. They're going to go away anyways. You can't learn with calculators." So we did everything by table. Okay, so first things first is uh, it's not precise enough especially when you're going to start adding things together, right? You're going to have a little bit of an issue, right? Because if everything is already three decimal place accuracy, if you add two or three things, this three decimal place accuracy, you're going to lose a little bit of that. Second thing is, anyway, I can get 17% out of this guy. 
No. Guys, you know what we had to do? Just real quick, got to tell you. Here's what we got to do. If I wanted 17%, 0.17, what I did is I had to look at the 0.18. I had to look at the 0.46. Ready for this? I had to think about how I divide it into 0.16, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So six, one, two, three, four. So I would figure out well, going from 18 to 46. So I think of numbers like this going over here. Uh, what would be the division markers between them going all the way to 46? And then what number would be right here from that point? And so you, I don't know, you guys want to do it together? Let's go for it. So uh, 18, plus the, 18 plus 46 divided by two, guys, real quickly here. What's uh, 18 plus 46 divided by two? How much? 32. Okay, so that will be 1.5. But I'm looking for 0.17. Um, so 32 is the middle. I'm kind of close to 32, but that would be 17.5, right? I want just 17. So then you sort of guess at it. You're like, you know what? Probably like 0 0.30 would be a good reference point. So 30% would be mine. Not precise. We good? This was, you're just kind of guessing between the two numbers. I mean, literally, that's what you would, you would do. So not good. Okay, I think we're almost at the end here. So one, two, let's do two things here as we go. Should we do it? I guess we should, yeah. Since I showed you guys the fast way to do it on the calculator, let's see if we can finish it up. Can you guys now give me, now we're kind of circling back to all the way back to 2.1. What do we do in 2.1? We did something called a frequency distribution. You guys remember that? Like da 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 da, -da. you put down the frequencies next to it. Oh man, here we go. 62% of cancer survivors are ages 65 or older. You randomly select six cancer survivors and ask them whether they are 65 or age or older. And the, the presumption is they're not lying. We're good. Because some people lie about their age. Like, well, I don't know. Construct a probability distribution for the random variable X. So I'm going to start it off for you guys here. You can either do it horizontally or you can do it vertically, right? It doesn't matter. I'm going to do mine vertically. So X goes first, it's gonna go like this. That's gonna go P of X. And we'll check each other's work as we go. But here it is, our possibilities are zero, say they are 65 or older, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Are we good? Can you guys give me the probabilities here? So do the first one. Let's see if we agree on the first one. So what's the probability that zero of them are gonna say it? And we're gonna go out three decimal places, three decimal places. Okay, we're good there. Um, same stuff that we've been doing before, right? So the formula would be 62% is my P value. That means my Q value is, anybody? Q values of the percent failures. 38 is good by me, 0.38. My N value is, how many am I asking? Six. And this one's gonna be for every single one, right? I'm gonna get a X value of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just for practice here. We'll be done with this section just a bit here. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go kind of let's 
let's do the first one. Just uh, do the first one first and let's see what we get. Three decimal place accuracy, good. So if we were to do this here, I would put six C zero for the first one, 0 0.620, 0 0.386. Tell me that one. Again, just three. And tell me when you got it. Okay, 0 0.003 is good by me. I'm gonna try it on the calculator. You guys do the rest, go for it. I'm gonna jump on the calculator here. Those are waiting for me. Zunka, here it is. Clear, clear. And remember the next one's gonna be easy. You're just gonna re-input your, your stuff, right? So it's six, math menu, probability number three. Zero is what I'm looking at. I like to I like the multiply part over here just because it kind of gives you a little bit of space there. Uh, 0 0.62 to the zero power. So I want zero successes multiplied by 0.38. And I want all six of them not to say it. Oh, 0 0.03. Perfecto. Okay. I showed you just a little trick here. What do we do, anybody? Second, boom, and entry, zoom. And then you got everything, you just put a stick a one in for zeros, stick a five in for the last six over there. Okay, let's try the next one here. Uh, let's see, I think I got 0 0.029 for the next. So I'm gonna put in the answers here. You went from less than a percent. And now we're up to 2.9%. Then we're up to uh, about 12%. That went up really fast. Then we're up to 26% here. Then we're up to about 32% here. About 20% here. And the end, and the end, we should get a, okay guys, I'm gonna do it, but uh, I get this for you guys, right? So instead of redoing the whole entire thing every single time, Let's go with just punching it in. So I'm gonna go this one. I already did the re-entry on it here. So I'm gonna go back to this one. I'm gonna say one here, one here. And I'm gonna say five over here, All right? One success, five failures in the process. And the answer is, love it. Okay, I'm gonna leave it up there. Let me walk around real quick here. See how you guys are doing, I'll come back. Uh, no, you don't have to add them up. We're just going to put those individual pieces here, right down here. So top of the end, don't add them up. If they, if you do add all of them up, they should give you a one. <coughs> if you try to tap it, you get the same thing. And then those of you that are actually using a phone, I wonder if you can actually uh, download like a stats cup. Okay. You should have by the like same thing stuff. Okay, if you're somehow not getting those numbers as you go down, tell me. Okay, let me just walk, kind of walk around and show you guys. We'll see just a bit. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm not going to choose anything. Talk to me, y'all. How did you guys do the big issues? Here we go. Next, for those guys that are done, here's what I need. You guys, ready? I need you guys to draw me uh, Instagram. Oh, with, with midpoints. Actually, this one, there's no, you actually have to draw at zero points because there's no range here, right? So you got to draw it. So, Instagram. So I'm thinking, uh, let's see, first things first is um, 
the x coordinates. So the, the y pieces are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's easy enough, right? Uh, the y coordinates uh, looks like I go all the way up to 32%, somewhere about there. So your choice, right? You can go up maybe like by five if you want, right? Five, 10, 15, 20, right? Okay. So 0 0.05, 0 0.10, that would be kind of a good way to go. You can go by tens if you like, but maybe like fives would be a little easier. All right, the other way to do it is if you wanted to go up by fives up to 40, that's by two. That by two. Okay, good. The graph is inside your textbook already, so you can see it if you want to, but see if you can just recreate from this. So first things first, right? That's the graph. So this one, because we do have a zero in our in our stuff here, that would be still connected. Right? There's no need to do that little squiggly thing that breaks it. Uh, your zero is actually going to be on the left side of the of your axes, right? So you actually have a zero here somewhere. So I'll show it to you, you guys. Will just give me like just give yourself like three minutes. To just try to try to build it. The x axes you're going to go zero, one, two, three, five, six. The y axes I'd probably go up to point, point three, five by fives. Point three, five by fives. Yes, that's right. Perfect. Histograms you touch. They're they're quantitative data because you do with numbers, right? And the only time they don't touch if you deal with categories, right? Um, like NFL, so, and NBA, then Major League Baseball. So that's one. Yeah, the boundaries will be there. Uh -huh. uh, this one would not be considered a midpoint because there's no range here, right? It would just be zero, one, two, three, five, six. So. Uh, Midpoint is made when you have a range of things like 100 to 120, 0.1 to 140. That's when we do range. That's when we do the midpoint. It's the middle of the range. Right? So this one, we don't need it because those are individual points already. They are going to touch. So the one that says zero on there is going to touch at 0.5, technically, right? And then at the one between one and two, you're going to touch at 1.5. <laughs> oh. clear time. So mark is zero. First guy that you see, mark is zero. Huh? About six for Well, the y axis. Good. Okay. Perfecto. You work. Yeah, see, that's when you have a range of right? That's when you have a starting off the range. You got those numbers on the X, and then we need those probably on the Y. I'll just do that. Uh, Mind a little bit more, okay? And then I'll see that somewhere. I just walk around this for a little bit here. Most people are doing good. So because you have numbers along the X and numbers on the Y, and you are going to connect the dots together. The bars should actually touch each other. Here. 
Words have to touch. So we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and the first thing that we're going to do is that the zero. That could be like a traditional algebra graph. The zero is actually going to be This one is 32 is the highest we have. All right, those are starting your graph when you start it. So, first things first is we go like this right here because there's no negative values of uh, frequencies, right? You go like quite one. Uh, because you have a zero, actually, one of your points, you're going to have to offset your zero. Your zero is actually off to the side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, you don't technically, I don't know if you call it a midpoint or not, you don't call it a midpoint because that's actually your values themselves. Because these guys are numbers. Uh, that means your graphs are going to touch. We're looking at quantitative data, right? And then we're going up here to 0.35. And then I'm going to have to break this off into maybe because 0.32 is the largest one. You can actually go to 0 0.40. That's fine. And I'm going to divide this up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 0 0.5, 0 0.0, 0 0.15, 0 0.20. 0 0.25, 0 0.30, done. And then we look back to our frequency here. So this guy is 0 0.003. That's like tiny, tiny, isn't it? It's not point, it's not 0 0.03, right? The first one that we have is uh, 0 0.003. Yeah, it's a scrape. It's like that right there. That's it. It's just barely anything. We good? As opposed to if it was 0 0.03, that was it, right? Then it would have came up to about right here. We good? That would have been your first one coming up like that. Okay, does that make sense? But this is just like nothing. Now the 2.9, now that was pretty good. The point, now we have 0 0.029. That's kind of halfway, a little more than halfway to 0 0.05. So this one's going to come up to about half, a little bit more than halfway. Comes back down in the middle. And these boundaries are going to touch each other. You want them to touch each other like this. Two. Two is uh, at one, at 12%. So a little bit above 10. Maybe about like right here is cool. Maybe that's a little too high even. It's a little tiny bit too high here. This one here, and you gotta go all the way to the middle of two and three, right? Because you guys have to touch. The only time they don't touch is if these guys were like categories, right? It's like socks, shoes. I don't want to pick clothes, but shirts, jeans, right? Those are categories, and you keep on going. And the graph should look like this right here at the end. Something looks like that.
Okay, we've got uh, one, two, just three slides to go. This should be pretty easy, but there are equations here. So we're going to do this quick equation. And I'm going to be done torturing you for today. All right, two more things real quick here. Three slides to go. Can we do it? Uh, tell me, you guys need more time to do the graph or no? Let's talk. Sure. Go for it. Go for it. I don't want to go too fast because it's for you guys. Oh. Okay, if it looks anything close to this over here, you're doing great. Okay. Cool. All right, let's go with it here. So let's think about this here just for a little bit longer. I know you guys are cool like that. Um, do you guys remember at the end, oh, like 2.3, do you guys remember, um, oh, do you guys remember variance and standard deviation? Remember those two things? Okay, so, because, so the first of all, the mean, what's the average? The mean is the one thing. Remember, mean tells you where's the middle, right? And then the variance and standard deviation tells you how much spread. In chapter four, we've been dealing with binomials, right? Success or failure, right? So now the question is this, how do you find the average of a success and failure experiment right because you can only do one or the other right how would you actually find the middle ground on this thing? so that's what we're going to do with next very easy formulas they're really quick so we can just do this here so mean the mean is mu so that means we're talking about a population and this is so cool what you do is you just figure out the number of people that are in this in the population and you multiply times your Success probability. It's just n times p. This is four point four point two. Four point three is pretty short, but we're gonna save it for the next time, anyways, because we didn't get to it. So, so you guys should be able to do all of stuff up to four point two. Yes, uh huh. I'll post it as soon as I can. Uh, since we didn't get through all of it. I got to debate whether we should be have exam next week, Tuesday or Thursday. Let me. Tristan votes for next Thursday. Okay. Anybody else voting for next Thursday? Whoa, we got a. Whoa, okay. Next Thursday it is. How about that? So, so you guys, because this is not to. This is not to destroy you guys. Okay. This is for you guys to learn. Okay. Next one. Real quick, we got two more variants. And then we got standard deviation. Variance we do sometimes, but really the, the main, main ones are mean and standard deviation. Top and bottom are the main ones. I think about stuff. And remember the relationship between variance and standard deviation is just a square root, right? We just take the square root and we're done. Good, good. I'm gonna try the example question here. That is so funny. Okay. 
Okay, I think you already got them. So how about this? In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 56% of the days in the year are cloudy. Can you find the mean variance and standard deviation for the number of cloudy days during the month of June? Interpret the results and determine any unusual values. So let's do that first. So mean, variance, standard deviation, let's do it quickly. Uh, anybody lived in a city where it's like cloudy most of the time? Kristen, how much of the time usually? 60, okay, yeah. Um, Brother-in-law lives in Portland, Oregon, and we visit him during summertime, and during there, like, that's cool, you know? And this is like, it's like July and August are the only sunny days and half that half the time, otherwise it's rainy and cloudy. It's like, you don't wanna be here in the winter. You don't see the sun in the winter season. So theirs is about 80, 80%. So whenever it's uh, sunny, like you see everybody outdoors. Yeah, there's the sun. Okay, let's go with it here. So solution is this, N is equal to 30. Because that means there's 30 days in June, right? So we gotta think about the days here. Um, success is 56, failure is 44. Can you guys, based upon what you just did on the previous slide, you wrote down, you guys wrote down the So 30 times 0. 0.56. Perfecto, yep. 30 times 0. 0.56, the average. The average should be that during a month of June, 16.8 days should be cloudy. That makes sense, right? Because it's just the probability of success and then you just have the number of days. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated not much, but now you just stick on the... Uh, time that it could fail as well. So it's N times P times Q as well. If you do that, try it on your calculator. Hope you come up with 7.4. Go, go, go. Yep, and then try it on your calculator as well here. So then this one standard deviation would be then just take the square root of the 30 times the 0 0.65, 0 0.56 times the 4, 4. Okay, so let's start talking about this because this is important. What, what does it mean to be unusual? And we'll talk about it just a bit here. We'll finish off with this. But every okay with mean variance and standard deviation. Calculated it, try it on your calculator. So that's the whole point here. Yeah, 2.7, about. Yeah, You got it, okay? Okay. Andy, you doing all right over there? Yeah, okay. Just want you guys to try it on your calculator at least once just to try it. Make sure you guys get the same answer. Okay, um, let's talk about this now as we finish up with five minutes to go. So what does it mean to be unusual? Unusual means you are more than two standard deviations away. You gotta go down from in the middle and up from the middle. So the important numbers are 16.8 and this 2.7 over here. So all we do is this, we just take 16.8, subtract, and I'll just show you on the next slide here, right here. Uh, let me underline it or highlight it or do something here, right here. So just take 16.8, you're gonna say minus two of the 2.7s. And this will be your lower level. Anything that's less than 11 days, that would be very, that would be unusual. We didn't get to the very unusual yet. There's another thing for very, this is just the unusual days. If you go two standard deviations up, so two times 2.7, that means if we had the month of June and there was 22 days or 23 days, because you round up in this case, that would be a very unusual June for this area. Okay, we stop there for today. So 4.2 is done. We'll come back on Thursday to 4.3.
And then whatever time is left, I'll go for homework questions. And then Tuesday of next week, we'll just do homework and quiz questions. We're good. And test is next week, Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.